Hello and welcome to Ageless Rock, a channel for megalithic fans with megalithic lens. In my previous video, I shared about this superstructure that could not have been a reservoir for agriculture. Today, I'm going to share with you what I think it was in ancient Angkorian city in ancient past. Approximately 1000 years ago, something big happened here. This Angkorian mega city not only has Angkor Wat and Angkor Thom to show off, but it has something much larger than anyone could imagine. It has a mebon in a beret. This Hindu temple in a beret has puzzled archaeologists since Western academicians came to know about it. Western archaeologists first argue that the entire water containment structure is a reservoir for agriculture. This argument will not hold water. If you have a Hindu temple in the middle of a body of water, the size of a lake so huge, you cannot see east side from the west side. There is no valve you can use for water to flow to plantations or fields for crops. Let's look at the logic of the beret as a reservoir. It was built on lower ground instead of higher ground. The torrential rain at the peak of the monsoon rain will bring the water level very near to the beret. It will be a useless water tank for 6 months of a year every year since 1000 years ago. It is a useless water tank today because you have to pump the water up to use the water. My instinct of an ancient reservoir is, it should be on higher ground for agricultural land on lower ground, where drainage system is not going to be a mystery. Let's start with a simple diagram of Angkor Wat. It is approximately 1.5 km long and 1.3 km wide, and it has a moat. The temple itself is the largest religious monument in the world. This largest Hindu temple is the pride of Cambodians today. Then, the Cambodians built Angkor Thom, a Buddhist temple with the largest moat. It is a huge square temple moat approximately 3 km long on all sides. This is about 4.5 times larger than Angkor Wat. Then, the Cambodians built the famous Ta Prom Temple, made famous by Angelina Jolie in Tomb Raider's blockbuster movie. The temple layout is bigger than Angkor Thom, but the moat and temple structure is only approximately 300 meters on all sides. Bandia Kede is not as famous as any of the top three temples, but it is still an amazing Buddhist temple made of polygonal stones. At 275 meters long and 230 meters wide, it is not an easy construction. Bantie Surai is a Hindu temple with a moat measuring 95 meters long and 85 meters wide, but the moat is inside the wall, so it is quite a unique change in terms of design. Bantie Sra is approximately 700 meters long and 620 meters wide. There seems to be nothing on the inside and is currently an open field for planting crops. There isn't anything written and therefore no entry in Wikipedia for now. Prayarup Temple is a Hindu temple with a square moat measuring approximately 200 meters on all sides. It is a massive megalithic sandstone Hindu temple, believed to have been constructed by Rajendra Varman in 10th century. Beng Melie is a Hindu temple measuring 1000 meters long and 850 meters wide. No one knows what happened here. King Surya Varman II gets the credit for now because it looks like Angkor Wat architecture. So it is a megalithic temple constructed around 11th century. Bachum Temple is credited to Rajendra Varman for its construction. This is a small temple with a small moat compared to the big ones. Nevertheless, at about 135 meters long and 125 meters wide with megalithic sandstones, 
This is an impressive achievement for anyone with chisels, hammers and hoes. Although we know very little about Chanta own temple, King Jayavarman VII gets the credit for its construction. This is an impressive double moat megalithic temple measuring 220 meters in length and 150 meters in width. Chao Srai Vibol Temple is a Hindu temple. This 1.5 km long by 1 km wide has a moat as wide as 150 meters. This temple is totally in ruin and beyond recognition. It looks like it was abandoned for so long and pillaged beyond hope for excavation and restoration. There are about 1000 megalithic temples in Cambodia. Many comes with a moat. The moats come with many designs. In terms of proportion, the moat in blue, the island in green, and the temple in brown comes with different proportion. West Mabon is disproportionately humongous for the moat. We will never know why because we never see it as a moat for a temple. This is like a water tank and the water is not supposed to go anywhere. And farmers never benefited from it since the day it was discovered by Cambodians themselves. This beret was not made for agriculture and that is why after two centuries of modern excavation, Looking for the purpose leads to nothing conclusive until today. Archaeologists are still inconclusive as to their purpose. Historians are inconclusive as to their origin. Engineers are clueless how it was constructed. Great minds think alike. They all agree they need more money for further investigation. This artificial square island in the artificial rectangular sea is about 150 meters by 150 meters. Academicians have yet to determine who created this, but they seem to like the idea that it is to represent the sea of creation in Hinduism. In 1936, some local gold diggers found a hand made of bronze about 13 inches long. So the hunt to look for a giant Buddha began in that area. Money and manpower were focused on searching for a giant Buddha. The search came to an end after a while without any result. However, in December 1936, a native Cambodian by the name Chitlat had a dream that Buddha told him exactly where is the Vishnu statue. In his dream, Vishnu wished to be free from the soil. He pointed to the curators the exact spot and they started digging. Three feet into the ground, they strike bronze. To their astonishment, they found the bronze statue of Vishnu. Thanks to a local villager with a dream, Vishnu was finally freed from the ground and is now resting in National Museum of Cambodia. This non-scientific interdimensional location technique is never taken seriously and is always considered a nonsensical coincidence by mainstream. This reminds me of the same thing that happened at Sambisari Temple in Yogyakarta in Indonesia in 1966. A local farmer had a dream about a buried temple. No one had a clue there was even such a thing. You can check out my video on Sambisari Temple under Indonesia playlist. Another incidence of interdimensional informant is the rediscovery of Shunan Tunich temple in Belize. It took a ghost woman with fiery eyes over 100 years to rediscover this temple. Proper official excavation began only in 1959. A stone sculpture was made to remember her. So thanks to this lady in white, we now have Shunan Tunich temple which means stone woman. You can check out this temple under Belize playlist. Today, what we have here is a temple in ruin. All the brain power from the West are trying their best to guess what happened here. So far, they teach the Cambodians that it is a drainless reservoir with a temple. But I can guarantee you, the Cambodians did not build this temple. 
In fact, I have the evidence to prove that. Cambodians cannot do drill holes on sandstone. Neither can they rake sandstones into blocks with tools that leave long striations with even gaps. So do not be surprised to hear locals tell you it was giants and interdimensional beings who built it. Some local guides even tell you it was European looking 7 to 8 feet tall people from another civilization who built it. Cambodians will tell you they did not do drill holes, square holes, and machine straight cuts like this remnant at Ak Yum Temple, just by the West Beret. This site is as strange as any mysterious megalithic sites in the world. It has random drill holes, cylindrical blocks, and a puzzling stone with a nice perfect curve as shown in the yellow box. I think it is part of a large cylinder structure for example, a large pillar. This West Mebon temple has two shafts which no one is 100% sure what it is for. I think it once had lingas inside. If this is true, that means this moat with the temple is a gigantic powerhouse for energies we are not familiar with. This beret is not a reservoir because farmers cannot palm water up for their crops. Farmers did not dig channels to their crops on lower land because it is flooded six months of the year. But what if it was a mega powerhouse for positive energy for plants, fish and birds and therefore benefited humans as well? Maybe it is time to do research on detecting waves and frequencies after it is fully restored. That's all for today. Hope you enjoyed my short presentation on West Melbourne and have a wonderful day. This is Bernie Ong signing out. Lehain.